Have you ever felt this kind of physical discomfort where maybe it feels a little bit like nervous tension or some anxiety or like you can't quite get a full breath or maybe you've got a pit in your stomach or a lump in your throat, those kinds of feelings, or maybe it even feels like, you know, um, like a panic attack might be coming on or something like that, or there's a lot of exhaustion or fatigue. Well, I'm sure all of us have felt some of this at some point. And sometimes it really is physical symptoms of something like, oh, I'm coming down with something or, oh, I had a bad day and I had an interaction with someone that was really challenging or triggering. But when you don't have that, when you know you haven't eaten anything strange or you haven't you know, done any you know, extra physical activity that's unusual for you or had difficult conversations or had a particularly emotional um, traumatic experience that day or anything like that, and yet you still feel this discomfort that's when it's time to ask ourselves a few questions. This time of year, we're turning toward a new year. And in that turn of the new year, so much shifts. And it's not just because of the date of January 1st. It's because nature is shifting and we are a part of nature. So when we shift toward the new year, we're moving out of the winter solstice and this time between the years. This is the time when I do the Sacred Nights of Winter journal and the Sacred Nights community work where we're really going into a deep dive to get to know ourselves better and it often dredges up stuff and it stirs things up and it brings things to the surface because we're being very conscious and aware of what's happening and what we're doing through those dark nights of winter. and even nature, there's an aspect of things going on below the surface. And then we have this emergence, this return of the light, and eventually we'll start moving toward uh, what, what is called Candlemas uh, on February 2nd, or we talk about it as Groundhog's Day, and there are other festivals celebrated around the world for this time that bring new life. And we start to feel a seed quickening below the surface. Well. Around the winter solstice Christmas time, there is a seed planted within us. It's a new birth that is happening and it happens every year, whether we're conscious of it or not. And I personally have a deep passion for choosing to be conscious of it because when we're conscious of it, we can take that into our new year. But what can happen is that as we do this deeper work, we might start feeling funny physically. And I've come to see that there are energetic things going on. I've done energy work and energy healing, received and practiced it. I did training in energy healing. It's not the, the crux of my work, but I really love learning about these different pieces that um, influence our being. And I believe we are very energetic beings, not energetic like rah, rah, I can run a mile kind of energetic or run a marathon energetic. I'm talking about there's energy constantly moving in and through and around us all the time. And often we can manifest things physically after they've actually manifested energetically. And so when we do these energetic shifts of going into the deep dives and stirring things up uh, within our subconscious, there's a lot of energetic shifting happening. There's movement happening. Things that were stuck start to become unstuck. And so we can then see that manifesting in the way that our body responds. So I wanted to share this because I think a lot of you might be going through this as the, the year turns. If you've done some of the inner work, if you did Sacred Nights of Winter, if you did my Solace program, or if you did any deeper inner work over the course of the year and you just start noticing that there's some shifting happening. There's some discomfort. I've been talking to a lot of clients lately that are mentioning this. Um, and and I, wanna, I wanna share that when we can pay attention to it and be willing to be with that discomfort, not try to name it like, oh, I'm coming down with something or, oh, it was just a bad day. I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna chalk it up to nothing. If we can actually pay attention to it, there can be some real gold to be mined there because when we ask ourselves, okay, what am I feeling right now? What is this pit in my stomach or this lump in my throat or this contraction in my chest? Or maybe actually what we start to notice is that these feelings are like feelings of expansion. We're growing. We're really literally growing and we're not fitting into what we used to fit into. Maybe we've outgrown aspects of our life, relationships, environment, job, who knows what. And of course, to the lower nature of our being, our lower ego, you could call it, that's scary. 
And so we're going to have these physical, visceral responses. And the key is, as you become more aware of them, you can begin to notice if they are what I like to call expansive shifts or contractive shifts. And when it's contractive, you know that you're probably in reaction mode. You're probably closing yourself off to others. You're probably, um, you know, operating out of fear and true anxiety and true um, uh, concern for, you know, just discomfort and, and not wanting to be vulnerable. But expansive shifting actually is vulnerability. When we are allowing for expansion, we're usually putting our heart out there. We're being vulnerable. We're saying, okay, I'm open and I can feel it and I can start to like, okay, can I breathe a little deeper? And it, it might feel really uncomfortable, but actually that feeling of not feeling like you can't breathe deeply can actually mean that you're needing to take a deeper breath because you've opened up to something and you can take a, a fuller, richer breath that, that fills you with something. And we are being asked to pay attention to that, to fill up that new space. Like a baby that comes into the world and they take their first breath in those lungs for the first time. And it's a little scary. And of course, there's all this discomfort. There's a new birth happening and that baby's not gonna be comfortable immediately in new clothing and the feel of the air on its skin and the feel of all these people holding it and all the noises around and the lights and and um, filling a dirty diaper for the first time. And what is that? And there's so much that, that can happen when, when we're born anew, you could say. So this time of year, there's a lot of this rebirthing symptoms, if you, if you will, you know, happening where we do have these symptoms of things shifting and changing. And I invite you to pay attention to the energy of it. Is it contractive energy? Do you feel contracted like you want to run away and hide? And you might want to run away and hide anyway, but like you're really feeling ill. You're really feeling reactive to something. Or is it that you're feeling really uncomfortable and part of you wants to hide, but maybe part of you also feels like a, an excitement underneath the surface, like something's happening and you're excited for what's coming. Most of the time, this time of year, that feeling can trick us. It can make us think that we want to run and hide because it is uncomfortable. But discomfort does not always mean it's not right. So I invite you to look at this idea of being expansive, opening yourself up to the expansion, going into it as opposed to hiding from it. Because what can happen is when we're in that expanding mode where we're being asked to breathe more deeply and take more into our being and recalibrate the cells and you know see what's going on around us and reassess our circumstances it will be most likely uncomfortable to do and it's very easy in our culture that always wants to feel comfortable to want to run and hide from that but before you go doing that, before you determine that, oh, this isn't the right place for me, or this isn't the right situation for me, or I'm going to, you know, push away from that person or this person, take the time to notice the expansive feeling. A lot of times people feel the same kind of way when they're falling in love and their heart starts to skip a beat. They're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so exciting. You know, there's this part that can be so exciting and so wonderful and so new and so uncomfortable but because we're associating it with this other person that we really like and we care about and we want to spend all our time with in a way we're able to sort of deflect those feelings and chalk it up to falling in love or you know chalk it up to being in a new relationship that we're hopeful about but when we don't have anything to chalk it up to when it just seems to be happening and we have no explanation that's where it can be so wonderful to tap into those feelings. And even when we do have something to chalk it up to, even if you are falling in love, you can, you can tap into those feelings and say, okay, why do I feel this nervousness? Is it nervousness because I'm being seen for the first time and heard for the first time in my life that, that feels so amazing and I'm not used to that? Or is it nervousness that's contractive because I feel like I'm not quite able to be myself and I really just want this person to like me and, you know, and I, I'm just noticing that I'm kind of holding myself back and not allowing for vulnerability, right? There's two very 
different versions, a contractive version and an expansive version. So I invite you to pay attention to whether it's expansive or contractive within you. And this is conscious expansion of your being, conscious awakening your inner wisdom and tuning into your body and your emotions and your stories within your, your uh, language and thoughts and paying attention to how we are expanding in the world.